Mr. Speaker, every time I mention a carbon tax election, he becomes so panicked and erratic that he loses control of himself and starts spitting out incomprehensible insults. True. But Canadians deserve us focusing on them. The CMP and the Auditor General have raised concerns about how this motion jeopardizes their independence in serving Canadians. The Conservative Party wants to play politics with Canadians' charter rights. We will not support that. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. So his idea of a charter right is that you have the right as a top government executive to take $400 million of other people's money right. and give it to your own company and then hide the criminal evidence from the police. Right. Well, Mr. Speaker, Canadians have the charter right to know where their money went. This week, Parliament has ground to a halt with Liberal corruption. No government bills are being debated. The Liberal Prime Minister, who said his government would be opened by default, is now causing the House to deal with his own Liberal government withholding documents from the RCMP that they've been legally ordered to produce. Why would the Liberals do that? Well, it's a case of hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars stolen in countless conflicts of interest by Liberals appointed by that Liberal Prime Minister. Common sense Conservatives won't stop until the Liberals turn over all of the documents to the RCMP. And then we have the Liberal Minister from Edmonton's business partner in breach of a House order for refusing to turn over key documents and provide answers on the infamous other Randy. Evidence ordered by a House committee proved the false from the Liberal Minister from Edmonton that he wasn't communicating with his business partner, and we know that that is against the law. Canadians don't have confidence in this Prime Minister, twice found guilty of breaking ethics laws himself. It's time to call a carbon tax election so Canadians can fire these corrupt Liberals and Conservatives can restore accountability. The Honourable Because the Prime Minister's carbon tax is forcing new uh, and unjustifiable costs on New Brunswick schools and hospitals that Canadians cannot afford. Will the Prime Minister call a carbon tax election so we can save our schools and hospitals on this tax? The Right Honourable Prime Minister talked again about his opposition to our bringing in uh, uh, an increase on capital gains because we know that asking uh, the wealthy to do a little more so we can deliver more homes for, Can for young Canadians to build that future is what we need to do. But the Conservatives continue to be there with cuts for taxes for the wealthiest, cuts of services for everyone else. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The Prime Minister is hiking taxes on home builders, on doctors, on job creators, and on farmers. And he's also raising taxes on hospitals and schools. The New Brunswick Premier is taking this Prime Minister to court because of the unconstitutional quadrupling carbon tax and the costs it will impose on snow plows, ambulances, heating hospitals and schools, meaning the loss of countless police officers, nurses, doctors and teachers. Instead of defeating the carbon tax in court, why can't we have a carbon tax election so Canadians can axe the tax? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, for the past number of years, multiple Conservative Premiers have gone after the price on pollution in courts, and they lost at the Supreme Court. The Canadians have decided that uh, price on pollution is the right thing. Uh, we've won multiple elections on that because Canadians know that the only way to build a strong economy is to fight climate change at the same time. The Leader of the Opposition doesn't get that, doesn't accept that, doesn't understand that abandoning the fight against climate change would hurt Canadians, would hurt our institutions, would hurt people and economic growth right across the country. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, and he concealed from both the courts and from Canadians his plan to quadruple the carbon tax right, to 61 right. cents a litre. Now, Premier Scott Moe of Saskatchewan says that this will hit schools with $204 million wow. in carbon taxes and hospitals with $175 million in carbon taxes, meaning we will lose doctors, teachers and other necessary workers serving Canadians. Instead of forcing premiers to fight to axe the tax in court, why can't we have a carbon tax election so Canadians can axe the tax? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. 
Mr. Speaker, the Conservative <coughs> leader is proposing that we abandon all the fight against climate change. He wants to take away the Canada carbon rebate that puts more money in the pockets of eight out of ten Canadians, the middle class and people working hard to join it, even as we both fight climate change, reduce emissions in this country, and create growth and opportunities in uh, cleaner jobs and cleaner careers. These are the issues uh, that Canadians are preoccupied with. How are they going to be able to afford jobs into the future when this leader wants to take away the fight against climate change? The opposition. The NDP Liberal government is not worth the cost of food. The food professor estimates that between 2022 and 2025, the cost of food will be up 34 percent. That's a time that coincides exactly with the NDP Liberal coalition. Coincidentally, the NDP leader's chief spokesman and brother, his company is a lobbyist for Metro. Oh. But the food professor blames the increase on carbon taxes, carbon taxes on farmers and truckers who bring us our food. Before Canadians go hungry, why won't the Prime Minister allow a carbon tax election so Canadians can axe the tax? The right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, farmers across this country are feeling the impacts of the extreme weather events that come from climate change, whether it's droughts or wildfires or floods. Uh, we are seeing the costs of climate change every single day. And we put forward a price on pollution that not only brings down emissions and creates more solutions uh, and economic growth. It also puts more money in the pockets of 8 out of 10 Canadians right across the country. It's the Parliamentary Budget Officer who says that. We're going to continue to fight climate change while the Leader Opposite wants to abandon the fight against climate change. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The Prime Minister loves to blame the rest of the world for the rampant food price inflation here at home. But the food professor proves that narrative false. He has calculated that food prices have risen 36 percent faster in Canada than in the United States of America. What does Canada have that the Americans don't have? Two words, carbon tax. So instead of forcing Canadians to line up at food banks, why won't he let them line up to vote in a carbon tax election? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I, I didn't dare say anything after the last question because I sort of couldn't believe my ears, but here we have the Leader of the Opposition actually quoting some sort of expert, which is a brand new thing for this House of Commons. To rely on facts and data is an excellent thing to hear. Now, perhaps the Leader of the Opposition will listen to the hundreds of economists and scientists who have pointed out that putting a price on pollution, particularly one that puts more money back in the pockets of the middle class and those working hard to join it is the best way to both fight climate change and grow the economy. But the leader opposite, he just wants to play Colleagues, I ask all members, including uh, the member from uh, Peterborough, uh, Halbert and Brock, to uh, please only take the microphone, uh, take the floor when he's recognized by the Speaker. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Right. Sorry. Honourable Leader of the Opposition. And I've got some more expert information for the Prime Minister from the food professor Sylvain Charlebois who finds that 13 percent of Americans live in food insecurity, while here in Canada it's 23 percent. In other wow. words, Canadians are twice as likely to live in food security after, after food price of inflation has been one-third higher under this Prime Minister's carbon tax regime. Again, instead of blaming others or forcing Canadians to go hungry, why not a carbon tax election so that Canadians can ax the tax and afford their food? 
The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, while the Leader of the Opposition is playing politics, we're focused on delivering solutions. We're delivering a national school food program that's going to help 400,000 kids have uh, fuller bellies at schools across the country and save Canadian families $800 a year on grocery bills. And if the Leader of the Opposition actually cared about food security in this country, you might imagine he'd have voted for that. Instead, not only did he vote against it, he pretends it doesn't exist. He pretends it hasn't happened. He's gaslighting Canadians on the things we're doing to fight affordability challenges. Instead, he's just offering political games. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, it's a food program without food. <laughs> it hasn't served a single ham sandwich, not a single bowl of craft dinner, not even a piece of broccoli has been forced upon an unwilling kid, Mr. <laughs> Speaker. This is a food. This is meant to feed bureaucracy, not feed kids. Meanwhile, there's a 42 percent increase in the food bank use at, in Mississauga, and 200 million, sir, two million Canadians are lined up at food banks. One quarter of children are going hungry after nine years of his carbon taxes. Why can't we have a carbon tax election? Yeah. Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, if the Leader of the Opposition actually cared about vulnerable Canadians, he'd be offering solutions, not just more politics. He stood against the, he stood against the price on pollution. Colleagues? We're going to ask the Right Honourable Prime Minister to start from the top. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, this campus conservative turned career politician doesn't actually care about Canadians. What he is actually doing is proposing to take money out of the pockets out of eight of the ten Canadians who do better with the Canada carbon rebate while we fight climate change. He stood against, he stood against dental care uh, that is delivering for over 800,000 people across this country, something he still says doesn't exist. He's standing against the school food policy that is helping 400,000 kids uh, get better food across the country. He stood against child care. He has stood against affordability measures. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, when you quadruple the tax on the farmers who grow the food and on the truckers who ship the food, you tax all who buy the food. The Canadian Trucking Alliance has calculated that the carbon tax will cost $20,000 for every long-haul truck this year alone. Now he wants to quadruple the tax, which will grind those trucks to a halt, meaning empty shelves in grocery stores, no parts for factories, and no paychecks for our workers. Instead of doing that, why not call a carbon tax election so that Canadians can axe the tax and save our economy? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I suspect that, like me, you have noticed that the Leader of the Opposition is particularly full of shameless slogans today. Uh, the reality is uh, he has nothing to offer Canadians. He has nothing but political slogans and uh, easy attacks uh, on politics. No actually moving forward on delivering on programs that are going to help Canadians. No stepping up to put more money in people's pockets. He's offering tax breaks for the wealthiest and cuts for services and programs to everyone else. That's not what Canadians need right now. I'd like to remind the Right Honourable Prime Minister and all members of this House that this is not an avenue where we want to go down. It can easily get out of control, and I would suggest that we don't go that close to the line. The Honourable Leader of the Opposite Order. The Honourable Leader of the, of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, every time I mention a carbon tax election, he becomes so panicked and erratic that he loses control of himself and starts spitting out incomprehensible insults. True. When Canadians deserve us focusing on them. The fact that after nine years of this NDP Liberal government, 
We have two million people lined up at food banks, a record smashing number. After nine years, one in four kids are going to school hungry. Before more kids go to school hungry, why can't we have a carbon tax election so that Canadians can ax the tax and afford their food? Yeah. Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Canada Carbon Rebate puts more money in the pockets of 8 out of 10 Canadians right across the country. It supports the middle class and people working hard to join it while we successfully fight against climate change, reduce emissions and grow the economy. But the leader opposite still doesn't understand that you can't have an economic plan if you don't have an environmental plan. His plan is to abandon the fight against climate change, leave Canadians to their own devices, lower taxes for the wealthiest, leave Leave everyone else to fend for themselves. That's not what Canadians do. Seen asked this question this week: Why is Canada's economy falling behind America's? Goes on to note that national income per person was 80 percent of the U.S. in Canada in the decade before the pandemic, and is now just 70 percent. The worst gap in decades. So will the Prime Minister, Prime Minister doesn't answer my questions, maybe he'll answer the economists' questions. Why is our economy falling so far behind the Americans? Is it because of his quadrupling carbon tax? I think so. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. On the contrary, Mr. Speaker, one of the reasons why foreign direct investment is up by 60% since 2015 is because, contrary to what the Harper government put forward, we're actually leading on the fight against climate change, on green energy, on a responsible uh, building for a sustainable future that means countries around the world want to invest. In fact, last year, Mr. Speaker, we were the third largest recipient in the world of foreign direct investment after U.S. and Brazil, which makes us number one in the G20 for people investing in Canada. We're going to continue to invest. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Speaker, Canada's workers get 55 cents of investment for every dollar an American worker gets, and only 65 cents for every dollar an OECD average worker gets for a net 450 billion Canadian investment dollars have poured out into the U.S. more than have come back under this Prime Minister's nine years. And The Economist points out that our GDP per capita is now lower than Alabama. And it says, and I quote, catching up to, to Alabama may soon seem like a distant dream. Oh. Why? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, Canadians are facing difficult times right now, which is why we made the choice to invest in things like dental care, like cutting child care fees in, in half uh, for families right across the country, $10 a day in six jurisdictions across the country, why we've chosen to step up uh, on dental, why we're choosing to step up on pharmacare to deliver free insulin and prescription contraceptives uh, to people who are having to make choices between uh, their health and, uh, and their rent or their, their food. These are the things we're choosing to make because we are putting the best balance sheet in the G7, the lowest deficit in the G7, in service of Canadians who need support. You, Mr. Speaker, have said that this Prime Minister is violating the rules of the House by refusing to hand over SDTC documents on a corporate welfare scandal of $400 million that the Auditor General says involved 186 conflict of interest. Where Bureaucrats, top officials in this Liberal government, were giving millions of dollars to their own companies. Will the Prime Minister hand over the information to the police? And if not, what's he got to hide? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Conservative leader just mentioned both the police and the Auditor General. Let me say what they have said. Both the RCMP and the Auditor General have raised concerns about how this motion jeopardizes their independence in serving Canadians. The Conservative Party wants to play politics with Canadians' charter rights. We will not support that. The 
The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. So his idea of a charter right is that you have the right as a top government executive to take $400 million of other people's money right. and give it to your own company and then hide the criminal evidence from the police. Right. Well, Mr. Yeah. Speaker, Canadians have the charter right to know where their money went. Yeah, so yeah. will the Prime Minister accept your order and the vote of this House to turn over the documents to the police so that we can put the bad guys in jail and get back the money that was stolen? Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, once again, the Conservative Party has demonstrated that it is uh, willing to upend the independence of institutions like the RCMP and the Auditor General for political gain. That is what they are proposing to do. They want to direct investigations. They want control over, over judicial processes uh, in their details. The reality is, Mr. Speaker, that's banana republic style behaviour that the Conservative Party is pushing. We will always stand up for Canadians' charter rights and the independence of our institutions. Thank you.